Good day, my name is Max Edkins. Um, I'm from the Connect for Climate program of the World Bank Group. We're coming to you live on the Connect for Climate Facebook page here at the All for the Green Week in Bologna. This is a week of environmental and climate change awareness in support of the G7 environment. Um, we are here in the SDG Media Zone. It's a media zone that talks about the sustainable development goals and the interlinkages with the environmental and climate challenges. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here today with uh, both Eleonora Kogo. Um, Eleonora is the uh, Italian winner for the Global Impact Challenge, and we'll hear a bit more about that in a bit, as well as uh, Chiara Giovenzana. Thank you for joining us on Skype, Chiara. Um, so Chiara is the uh, chapter ambassador for the Singularity University. Thank you for joining us. Um, so to just get us started, uh, Chiara, you. maybe we could start with you and um, maybe you could explain a little bit about the Singular University as well as the uh, Global so Solutions Challenge um, and, and what you aim to achieve with that. Singularity University is uh, uh, an institution that was uh, founded in uh, Silicon Valley uh, as a non-profit uh, uh, is now a benefit corporation. And the goal of Singularity is uh, to address uh, the grand challenges of the world, uh, meaning the big problems like uh, as poverty, education, uh, climate, uh, uh, and to address them, to solve them using the technologies. Um, so the idea, of course, is to, using, to use technologies, uh, exponential technologies, for those technologies that are improving and changing uh, very rapidly, um, addressing the problems without creating further problems. So uh, the sustainability is really uh, inside the concept of Singularity University. That sounds um, very exciting and, and very relevant to the discussion here at, at All for the Green. Um, and I'm sure, as, as you know, when you look at the grand challenges, a lot of them interlink with each other. So if, if you address climate change, you also end up addressing environmental pollution. You help protecting the environment above and below the sea. Um, but you also need the education and the necessary, uh, for example, sustainable cities or uh, affordable and, and uh, sustainable energy for all. Um, so I understand this year your focus was around climate change. Could you explain a little bit more um, what exactly you're asking of the participants and, and some of the outcomes of the challenge? Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, all the grand challenges are uh, intertwined and very connected. And uh, uh, so are the problems, uh, uh, but also the solutions. So uh, when you find, uh, when you look at the specific technologies, you cannot nowadays imagine a technology that is not connected to other technologies. So artificial intelligence is connected by a technology to nanotechnologies, for example. And uh, uh, the climate uh, change is really one of the biggest issues that we have right now. Uh, and so that's why we've been asking uh, to participants uh, uh, to come up with the potential solutions for that. Um, and the reason why climate change is one of the biggest challenges is that uh, we have only one uh, planet, basically. And so uh, if we don't take care of this planet, uh, uh, there's, uh, it doesn't matter what we are doing uh, in other fields, because it's really only one planet. So that's why we started with uh, uh, climate change as the first one. Uh, but as you said correctly, uh, even when you look at the climate change, you always have uh, to address uh, and keep in mind uh, all the issues uh, that you might have and that you have uh, in uh, cities, in poverty, in education, in all other challenges. So the, uh, uh, the concept of uh, um, cross-fertilization and contamination is really key. Absolutely. No, that's really exciting um, to hear that, that climate change has been chosen as, as a first uh, challenge for, for the Singularity University. Um, now, <coughs> climate change is a multifaceted issue. So it, it is driven by human emissions of greenhouse gases, um, and it's having the impact that is warming the world, which is affecting 
the ocean levels, it's changing the um, periodic uh, climate cycles, it's causing more droughts, it's having more extreme weather events. Um, so on one side, part of the solution is really that people have to adapt to these future climate impacts. Um, on the other side, you have to also continue to mitigate, so to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases being produced. Now, Eleonora, you were the, one of the winners, uh, the Italian winner of, of the challenge. Could you maybe explain a little bit more about um, how, how you got involved, firstly, and then also, secondly, what, what is the solution you're proposing? Yeah. So, um, the reason why I got involved, I mean, I knew a bit about Singularity University, but the fact that this year they decided, in addition to, you know, the focus on, on all the challenges, they decided to have this kind of overarching theme on climate change was, you know, a bit cool for me because I've always worked on climate change, both on, uh, you know, emission reductions project and more recently on, uh, on how we deal with climate change, you know, with its impacts and what we can do to, to mitigate those, those risks. Um, and, uh, and so, and, uh, and I've also kind of worked alongside with climate scientists and, uh, and, uh, and so like I'm very kind of aware about the kind of wealth of information that we have to, that can help us adapt to climate change, particularly when we look at the future, how, you know, temperature uh, is going to change, precipitation patterns are going to change around the world. So, so my idea came from kind of working with scientists and, and I realized that, you know, there's this very kind of um, precious information that uh, unfortunately too often remains stuck in academia. So my idea was to, 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 to bring it out of academia and make it accessible for everyone. Yeah. One of the, um, of the goals of this competition was to, to, to put forward an idea that, had, uh, um, that, that could uh, affect one billion people in 10 years' time. Yeah. Uh, so like, you know, very kind of um, looking quite, quite ahead. Uh, so obviously, I mean, we hope that, uh, that science is going to improve along uh, because we have more uh, computational capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these kind of predictions are, um, uh, they are made from, from climate models, which require a lot of computing power. Uh, but, you know, also as we, we improve um, our kind of observations of, of, of the planet, thanks to, you know, much better kind of observation from satellites, etc., mm -hmm. we're going to be able to make better uh, predictions. So, in particular, my idea focuses on, on the shortest time scale. So, you know, we're kind of more familiar with when we talk about projections, how the climate is going to change over 50, 100 years. But uh, there is a kind of a field of, of, of climate science that has focused on the kind of shorter time scale. So, you know, how the climate is going to change the next season. You know, it's going to be warmer than usual. It's going to be less rainy than usual. And also, the, there are also others looking at uh, what they call a decadal prediction. So, you know, how the climate is going to change over the next 10, 20 years. And I thought that this information is very critical, particularly for people that are working in agriculture, 1.3 billion people. Mm. Um, if you look at you know, how, we, how much energy we consume or, or, or production from renewable sources, that's also very uh, linked and impacted by, 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 um, by climate. And also, you know, when, we, when, we, when we look at you know, how planning about new infrastructure, you know, knowing whether it's an area that is going to be prone to flooding or you know, sea level rise, etc. So my idea was to gather all this information and make it accessible to the public. Accessible, so in an open source format, but also understandable, because mm -hmm. unfortunately, sometimes it's a bit difficult, the kind of communication between scientists and, and uh, you know, people working and, and using this information on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that, you know, as, as the information is there, more accessible, um, it's going to be um, help also kind of other people to develop application based on this information so that that can, uh, that can influence their work and in a way that this information kind of help us um, to plan for a more kind of resilient uh, development and, and future ahead. That, that sounds really exciting. Um, so it's really linking a lot of the new technologies at hand. So we've got new computing powers as well as, you know, mobile access. Um, we're being fed information through the internet all the time. But now it's about linking the information that defines climate change, that tracks the changes within our weather systems, within our seasons, and delivers it in an effective way to, to the consumers. Um, so let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Um, so in particular, I was interested to hear that you want to 
use the forecasting and the predictions for the development of renewables, how exactly would you present that to renewable energy developers? How would they uh, pick that up and apply it uh, in their work? Yeah, well, it's more about kind of facilitating the access to the information, which then is going to be kind of integrated into their kind of decision-making process. So, you know, if they know that, uh, that a particular area is going to be um, particularly prone to um, drought, there's going to be less water availability that perhaps is not a good area to build, you know, a hydroelectric plant because there's going to be... So it's more about the kind of user information that you make. And, um, and uh, I mean, agriculture is generally a sector that is very directly impacted. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where it's kind of very useful to know ahead of time, for example, when you look at the, at the seasonal time scales, whether there is a risk of a, of a, of a, of a, of a drought, and therefore whether perhaps you could, uh, you could, you could decide to plant a different, um, to grow something different that is more drought resistant, or you know, when is the best time to, to irrigate, mm -hmm. depending on you know, what's, what's expected for the months ahead. And <laughs> is, is quite a lot of this work already taking place? Like, is there a field of, of research and knowledge that you can build upon? to uh, make it more efficient. So, for example, I, I know that Google came out with a kind of a solar roof potential mapping tool. Um, that would be a similar kind of application? Or would you yeah. shift and change things? Uh, actually, they've also made uh, um, a very interesting uh, platform, which is called, um, also in collaboration with Google, where they look at uh, how the forest coverage, land use changing. And you know they've used the kind of data that they have been collecting over uh, the last few decades. And um, so something along the way where you kind of have a map where you can uh, kind of download data, but you can maybe also upload your own data of information, mm. and you know which is kind of kind of going to help you in terms of like managing the climate risks. Mm. So that's. But you know we'll see. I mean I'm going to be uh, working along. Uh, with some very kind of uh, tech savvy people, so it's going to be a very interesting process of, of discussing and making this idea evolved based on the kind of best available technology. Great. Um, maybe we can take it over to you, Chiara. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's coming up for Eleonora as she heads over to uh, engage in, in, in the study program and, and, and well, the tutoring program? Um, and, and just explain a little bit of, of the format and, and what you can expect to get out of that. So Eleonora is going uh, uh, to attend the most amazing uh, program, I think. Uh, it, uh, it really changed my life. Uh, those 10 weeks uh, have been, for me, just wonderful. Uh, because you are with uh, uh, 80 other people from uh, many different countries, from different backgrounds, different cultures, different experience but also uh, in a different uh, uh, time of their life. Uh, and all of them uh, are very keen on uh, solving uh, uh, some of the grand challenges. Um, so she will uh, create uh, amazing friendship. Uh, she will uh, work together with these people to really try to solve those problems. And uh, uh, they, everybody is very committed. Uh, to do their best uh, to achieve that goal. Um, and so uh, the, the program is divided into different uh, uh, periods, let's say. So there's a period uh, at the beginning where she's going to uh, uh, go uh, into a deep learning of what are the technologies and what are the grand challenges. So a, a very large overview of, of uh, what's uh, available and what the problems are right now. And these uh, uh, lessons will not be in uh, a regular, as in, in the format of regular lessons, but there will be experts, world experts, uh, sharing their knowledge and their experience. And then there's uh, um, a second part where uh, the students, the participants, uh, uh, really uh, try to absorb uh, uh, the Silicon Valley ecosystem. So they are going to visit uh, different companies, uh, different uh, experiences uh, that are in Silicon Valley. And the last part uh, is uh, um, the, are the team project. So the participants will really work together uh, to put together solutions, uh, so future startups, future non-profit, uh, that uh, will have the goal uh, to impact the world, impact one billion people in 10 years. 
So I'm really, I've gone through the program myself uh, seven years ago. It's, it's been uh, just amazing. And so I'm very jealous of Eleonora <laughs> that <laughs> is going through that uh, uh, in just a few days. So good luck. Um, and maybe Chiara, just as a, as a follow up. Um, so we're on Facebook Live. So um, our audience is quite a young audience. Um, maybe, what, what is your message to anybody listening to, to uh, this video? And, and how would you encourage them to get involved in tackling climate change, um, seeing that it is one of our generation's greatest challenges? So my suggestion is that uh, the most disruptive uh, solutions uh, uh, often come from people that uh, uh, maybe do not even have the degree uh, or in that specific field, or that uh, uh, they never really studied that. And maybe they've been working on something else, or maybe they were just too young uh, to have had the experience uh, to work on that problem. Uh, but since uh, uh, they've never worked on that, uh, they've never been told uh, this is not uh, possible. And so uh, if you are young, you want to change uh, uh, the world for the best uh, and help uh, the climate change, just get involved, uh, just share your ideas, uh, uh, share your ideas with your friends uh, and try to really come up with the solutions and work together. And uh, um, never listen to people that tell you this is not possible. Always try and try and try again. Um, so that reminds me of Nelson Mandela's quote, it is, um, it is not possible until it's done. And, and that's exactly. really what, what, exactly. what we need to do. We need to um, do it on climate change. We need to implement the solutions. We need to transition to that low carbon resilient future. Um, <clears throat> the interesting aspect of climate change and, and which makes me really excited to be working on climate change is a multifaceted approach. That there is actually an opportunity in every component of our economy to shift it away from the fossil fuel complex to something that is low carbon and resilient. And, and, <clears throat> and that's where I'd like to move over to you, Eleonora, to give us that final um, you know, words of wisdom. Now that you've been working in the climate change field for a while, and you're about to embark on a journey where you're gonna you know, delve into how exactly you can present the solutions through big data and through the interconnectedness of our world, what is your message for the younger viewer out there? Yeah, I mean, climate, is, uh, climate change is something that is going to affect everyone, you know, in a different way, wherever you're going to be in, on this planet. But uh, everyone can, can have a role in, uh, in, uh, into, into building this kind of low carbon and climate resilient world. So, um, you know, there is really kind of room for everyone to get, to get on board, to get uh, a deeper understanding of these issues, whether you can uh, work on, uh, on, on, on reducing the problem, so, you know, solutions to, to reduce emissions, uh, you know, even kind of innovative ways, and, you know, using those exponential technologies that are going to change the way we live on this planet over, over the next uh, years but also a solution on how we can deal and, and adapt to those changes that we're going to see uh, happening on our planet, you know, how we can best prepare so that you know, uh, we're going to minimize the risk and, uh, and hopefully uh, have a more kind of prosperous um, future for all. Absolutely, and, and with that I want to thank both of you for uh, taking the time and joining us live <coughs> in the SDG Media Zone here at uh, All for the Green Week in Bologna. Um, in support of the D7 environment. So these are really some of the discussions and messages that we want to relay to our politicians as well as to the broad audience out there that we can tackle climate change and the tools are here um, ready for the grabbing. Thank you so very much for your time and you. have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>